Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan Wiegand and with me is a guy who woke up to, I don't know, about 10 texts Thursday morning as he was sleeping at the second half of the CONCACAF qualifiers. USA turns it around. It's Logan Stump. Yeah, and then uh, with me today is Jordan, who forgets to record weekend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a great we, practice run here. We really did. Good uh, thing we only got like two minutes in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, waking up to your text messages was maybe the highlight of my World Cup qualifying, just because uh, I, I, I went to bed after a really crappy half. Um, it didn't look like we were going to score. It looked like they were just going to drill us 1-0 and then put it, send us backpacking towards the U.S., and it, it ended up being a really good result and four goals. I thought you were joking about the four goals just because I, I, I was like, there's no way that this team, the way that they looked in the first half could ever score four goals. And so unless somebody got hurt or you, know, you got 12 guys that, that couldn't play in the match or something like that, they had to call it off because, you know, the CDC comes running on the field and tells them all they have to leave because they can't follow protocols or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that's a wild story. Too bad we don't cover that. Um, <laughs> too bad that wasn't CONCACAF. That sounds very CONCACAF, by the yeah, way. It does. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Honduras scored first in the 27th minute. Moya getting on the board. Then Logan went to bed at half. Then mm. I text him about three minutes after he goes to bed or whatever. Uh, Anthony Robinson, 48th minute, gets us level. Uh, Ricardo Pepe scoring in the 75th minute. Brendan Aronson scoring in the 86 and Legette scoring in the 90 plus three. I couldn't believe it. There was a time where I was holding on hope for a draw. I'm like, one, one, this is great. <laughs> and you're like, man, I would love to get one more goal. And then the 75th minute you get that. And you're like, okay, shut it down. Let's escape with the, with three points. And then we were like, nah, let's score another two and just put it away. <laughs> uh, especially like the, the Aronson one. I was like, all right, now that's, that's really done. Three, one, we're good. And then just for giggles, putting in the fourth one, uh, which was fun. And, uh, yeah, this was, you know, I think Pepe was involved in all four goals. So mm -hmm. he made a big impact in his first start. Uh, all the goals, uh, besides the first one, come after uh, Pulisic comes off and uh, Roldan comes in. People were very angry about that. Oh, they were so angry about Roldan. Uh, coming in. Uh, but <laughs> then you had uh, Yedlin coming in for Sands. Uh, you get Pepe getting an assist from Yed uh, Yedlin in his goal. Aronson gets an assist from Pepe. And Leggett scores in the 90 plus three. Three of those goals coming from MLS and former MLS players. MLS players as of just last year, Brendan Aronson, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, who's looked really good. In qualifying, I think, and I, I think we're at the point where uh, Aronson needs to be in the squad if we get to the World Cup. Is, is my thought. I think he is definitely like. I don't. I don't know wherever they want to play him, but I think mm -hmm. he needs to start being like in the games, whether it's a sub or uh, starting games. He needs to be there. Yeah, I would say after the, uh, you know, after the first couple of matches and just the way he's played over the summer too, um, and the way that he's played at Leipzig, he's actually turning out to be, I think, probably our best threat when it comes to the attack. After you know, the, I think Ricardo Pepe's got a couple of games that he needs to prove that he can keep doing that because he looked fantastic. But I think, like you said, Jordan, I think Christian Pulisic, Ricardo Pepe, and Brendan Aronson made cases at least in this qualifying, that, that they're they're the reason why Greg has an easy time penciling guys in in the front, just because I think those three can be so dynamic when they choose to be and when they're healthy that I think you're looking at a very realistic Kristen Pulisic, Pepe, and then Brendan Aronson on the, on the right wing uh, playing because I, I think they're that good. I think Brendan can play multiple positions, even if Weston's not going to be with the team. I think Brendan can play midfield roles. I think that he's versatile. I think... He's got, and you and I talked about this during the last episode, where you kind of have to have that dog-eat-dog -dog mentality when you play CONCACAF. I think Christian can switch over. I think Ricardo Pepe was born in it, and I think Brandon Aronson lives it. So I think, you know, those three guys, along with Hoppy, they've got a different kind of edge to them, and I think that's what makes them effective in CONCACAF. 
Whereas, you know, a Josh Sargent, as hard as he, he tries, I, I think there's times where he just gets lost in the mix just because he's just not physical and creative enough to get around the concrete cappy um, situations that he gets himself in. But um, overall, man, Brendan Aronson, I, that's what you and I have been texting. We just want to get his jersey for the U.S. men's national team because I think he's a staple for years to come. He's my boy. <laughs> Philadelphia, right? Union. Yeah, uh, yeah so that is – play too. What? Your other boy played too. Yeah, he's been playing all right too. Yeah, yeah, it's he's he's doing okay. Uh, I, I think there were some some issues with with him, uh, some of his style. Uh, but I, I think what you'll see probably is Chris Richards. I would think. Yeah. Is probably further ahead than McKenzie at this point. He's getting time at Hoffenheim, and we'll see how it goes if he gets caught in October. Uh, or not. Um, Logan, I, I want to ask you here, you just kind of alluded to it with Pepe saying he has to prove himself, but is he the number nine that we've been looking for, and should he be called in for October and start all three of those games? So when I'm looking at it, right, I, I'm looking at the idea that uh, we need a number nine that's not only goal-oriented, but he also needs to be able to create for his two wingers, just, just because I think Pulsic and Brendan Aronson are going to score – um, and whoever they put on the wings up there with them. Um, I, I think that's been part of the issue is the United States has just been solely reliant upon like a Pulisic to come through or uh, maybe a DK when he's there to come through or maybe even a Hoppy when he's there. But now it seems like Ricardo Pepe is that kind of guy that is going to create. And with creation, he's going to get a lot of goals, 12 goals and 22 matches with uh, FC Dallas. So I think that that's, huge because for a young kid 18 years old he's now proven that he can play on this big stage and like you said he was involved in every single goal or at least setting up somebody to set somebody else up for the goal uh it seems like everything that he touched turned to gold and i think they needed that if you look at ricardo pepe in the way that he plays he's goal dangerous in the box he gets to bot or that he gets on the end of balls that i think sergeant has a hard time getting to that a dk has a hard time getting to sardes isn't quite quick enough to get to so i, I think and yes, it's weird to say it, but I think this 18-year-old kid is probably going to be our future. Uh, it's just a matter of like how much can he progress being 18, and is if he gets into a tough spot, how does he kind of react to that? But so far, I mean, to be 18 and have that many goals in MLS and to play like he is with a team that's not so great, uh, I, I think that's a big testament to just how good he is and how hard he works. And I do think that that going forward in the next three matches, Greg pencils him in and Greg pencils Brendan Aronson in, and then they form a team in and around them. You missed a good pun there. Uh, everything he tur uh, touches turns to goals. Yeah, goals. <laughs> I did. Crap. <laughs> Retake. Let's restart. Let's Brand. just start the whole thing over again. <laughs> everything he touches turns to goals. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's a shirt. Um, but anyway... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree. I think Pepe just has that instinct. And, you know, there's been Serie A teams trying to sign him last January. They're very interested in him. For, uh, uh, Fab, you know, Romano, who does all the transfer stuff, just put something out about that as well. Um, so I just wanted to also touch on the Weston McKenney because we did talk about it last time, but more details came out after that episode. Uh, Jeffrey Carlisle of ESPN.com put up uh, uh, was able to actually get the info on what happened. So uh, there was multiple violations of this policy, uh, the COVID pro protocol policy by uh, McKenney, and not even really, you know, they even say on here not really wanting to stress the COVID protocol stuff because it was just team policies that were broken that. Mm -hmm. um, even in a time of non-COVID, uh, could have got him sent home. So that has not changed. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the irony is that McKenney told teammates after the El Salvador game there needs to be more accountability, and then he goes on to break those protocols before the Canada match. And it sounds like he went out and stayed somewhere else one night, and then the next night brought somebody into their bubble. So just two things there. And now, uh, you know, he played at Juve this weekend, didn't look all that great. What do you think is wrong with him? It, it, does he just need to mature? Is he 
burning his chance on the national stage and the world stage? You know, it's, it's a shame because he's a really good talent. I, I think that in a midfield where, you know, if he kept his head down and did what he was supposed to do with the team, I think that he becomes one of our more reliable players. But that being said, I mean, he comes out and talks about accountability, but then he can't hold himself accountable for anything that he does. So as a 23-year-old, it's not that hard to just play soccer for a week and go do whatever you want back in Italy. Like, just I, – I, there's probably less protocol there. Anyway, just go back. Do what you want. Have fun. Come to camp. It's two weeks. If you can't control yourself for two weeks and stay out of trouble, then I, it just – it's detrimental to this team. And Pulisic said it too. They interviewed him and he said, you know, he broke team rules and that's it. Like we all know we come here for one job and one job only. And Christian is in that realm where he's like, Hey, I didn't qualify last time. And if you keep doing this crap, then I'm not going to qualify again. And my window is a lot shorter than yours is. And especially with this, you know, the injuries that he's had, Christian might get this world cup maybe next. And that's it. I mean, it's, it's that tough for Christian because it, it, you know, he's seen the heartbreak. Weston is just this young kid and we all make mistakes when we're younger. So I don't want to harp too much on him, but it, it really does. I think this is a clear message sent by Craig. I think it's a, it's the right message sent by Craig and the team. And I think, it, you know, he's going to have to work his way back into it. I wouldn't be shocked if he's invited to the next camp, but doesn't play. Um, I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that are going to have to happen for him to get, uh, forgiven by his teammates. I think he's going to have to apologize multiple times. I don't think that they'll play him in this next window, maybe not the next or the following. Um, so, you know, I, I think that he's really on strike two. I think he jumped straight to strike two just because of the magnitude of him just keep, you know, his broken rules keep causing this team all sorts of problems and heartache. So I think that, you know, I, if I was Greg, the next time he screwed up and after a long you know, forgiveness period. I, I think that you'll see Weston start to fade from a lot of places because I know Juve's had some issues too. I'm okay with not calling him in in October. Um, and now, obviously, I think they will. Yeah. Just because they pretty much said it's done, like they've handled it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that automatically gets you a call up though either. Like if he's not playing well at Juve, then he shouldn't be called in. We have, yeah. uh, you know, None of these should be called in just by name. Uh, that's even Pulisic. I, I don't think any of these players should be called in because of their name. I think they should be called in because of how they're playing and how they fit into the team. So we'll see how it goes, right? We'll, we'll see if he matures. You know, 23, though, is how old he is. It's not that young. All right, we got Ricardo Pepe's 18 following <laughs> the rules out here, okay? We have Pulisic, who's 22. He's actually younger than him and uh, more mature. You know, it, it's a maturity thing. Um, so I, I'm not going to forgive it just because we're all, we've all done young, st stupid things when we're young. Because actually, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's never gotten anything stupid. No, no I, I mean, agree. I agree. Like, I, I've, I've done enough. In I, knew you, I knew you younger than Wes did, and you were mature. Like, you did That's not true. do yeah. anything like this. So, no. I mean, it's not that uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have called out of work one time. <laughs> that was pretty immature, but it was a hell of a day. <laughs> yeah, but the whole nation wasn't riding on you going to might have been, Animal yeah. Kingdom. <laughs> might have been. You don't know them. They could have been waiting for me at the Lion King Festival. And yeah, the, I, uh, the scouts for... Waving Nemo. people in lines were Scout. like, yeah. oh, man, we need Logan. He missed it. He missed his, Honestly, missed his I, shot. Yeah, I mean, I brought too many people in the bubble. It got out of hand. I, I didn't know how to apologize to my coworkers, and that was that. Yeah, uh, so we'll see. Hopefully he takes it seriously. Um, is this strike two for you, though? If, strike, if he does it again, is he no longer a U.S. Men's National Team player? I don't think you can ever say never. I, I think there will be a time where he will mature. Um, but he'll have to earn it back if he does yeah. this again. He'll earn it back a lot if he does it again. He's been warned. He had the same thing at Juve. All in the span of a year, not even a year. Yeah. Like, how many times do we have to tell you type of thing? That's true. So if he does it again and it's very, very soon, uh, then no. But if he reaches, like, if he does it again, uh, I think it would be time for a little break. 
and say, you have to earn your way back up. You're not just getting called in because you're Weston McKinney. Right. And then if he, you know, matures and let's say he, you know, a few windows later is playing well and he's mature, then yeah, I will welcome back in with open arms because I don't think you can do anything that can completely get you locked out of the national team. Um, you know, uh, I guess unless if it's something really, really bad, you know, right. but, uh, but if it's just these violations and, you know, you're like, come on, you should be better than this, but it takes him a while to get to know it, then, you know, maybe a year or two break. And then if you're turn 26 and you figure out what you've done wrong, then you can come back. But if you're playing well, um, I'm not calling people in just to call them in is, is my main thing. Um, in this qualifying window, do you think that Matt Turner did enough to solidify his spot? Um, or do you think he still relies heavily on Steph? I, look, I, I, what I would do, Matt Turner would be number one. What Greg yeah. will do, he's very used to. Uh, he's very used to Stefan. He played mm-hmm. with him at Columbus. I think that gives him an edge. And I think he probably would have played if Stefan didn't have back spasms. Yeah. Or a COVID test. I think he had both. Did back COVID spasms and COVID. Back um, yeah. So we'll see. But which we didn't talk about on here, I don't think. Stefan just signed a long term. Like a uh, Ederson just signed a deal with City until 2026. Uh, Stefan needs to probably move out of there, I would think, by next summer because. I just don't see how he does get the number one spot if he's not mm. playing. Because Matt Turner, probably staying at the Revolution, he's going to be playing all the way up to the World Cup next year. He'll be probably in great form. While Stefan is, you know, playing FA Cup or, you know, Carabao Cup games, and that's it. What's yeah, your thoughts well, as a City fan? Because uh, we don't talk about it much on this podcast. Yeah. But you are a City fan, so you have Stefan there. But, like, what's your thoughts on that whole situation? Yeah, I mean uh... – I personally uh, think that Stefan should move just because, uh, you know, I, I think that Ederson is not going to sit at all. He he rarely sits. The only time he sits are those early FA Cup games or the Carabao games, um, games that don't really force City's hand. So I think that he gets two to three starts, and then whatever they do in Champions League really depends – um, and, and he'll start some games there if they get some points and are ahead of the group. But, I, you know, I think you're right. I think if he wants to be the number one for the U.S. men's national team come November of next year, there's no way that he should be at City, um, especially going into that fall stretch when it's time to start winding down. Um, one, because it's going to be a really hectic time of year. So all these guys are going to be going out on international duty. Um, maybe he gets some matches in um, here and there with some uh, some other clubs when he's you know, maybe sold over the summer, but I, I don't know. I don't know what you do at this point because I don't think he'll move in January. So that leaves him over the summer. And then the next matches that he'd be playing would be August. So, it, you know, maybe he gets good reps, but I, I doubt it. Coming into a, a game is a whole different beast because it's just not game speed when you're out there playing with your own team. Yeah, that's the thing uh, for me about Stefan. I want to see him do well, yeah. but I think he could kind of pull a Tim Howard. Tim Howard was a Manchester United goalkeeper, uh, went to Everton, started playing all the time, became great. That's kind of what Stephanie needs to do. He's a backup city goalkeeper, needs to go to a Premier League team that can use him, mid-table, bottom, whatever, wherever he's going to actually play and be able to make a difference. And then he'll be ready to go for World Cup because, like you said, the bad thing is waiting until summer, okay, is he has to find a situation and then he'll only have August to November to really not. So that's the bad thing. He would have to lock down a starting spot and that's short of a time span. So mm-hmm. he'd have to be going somewhere that he knows he's going to be able to start. And I just don't know where that would be right now, but. Um... Arsenal. <laughs> they, <laughs> they just collect goalkeepers for no reason. Uh, I'd feel they... really bad for him if he went to Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, you would. Uh, my dad would probably be a fan of that, though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Mexico and Panama drew 1-1, and Canada beat El Salvador. And I saw a lot of people saying, that's what we should have done in El Salvador. They were at home. Yeah, I was going to say that. Was <laughs> it's a whole different story. And We look good in the table, though. 
Look I'm actually this. very tired of people also saying that they don't care if it's a home uh, a home or away game. We should be able to stomp these teams. It's just so different. It's I, I get it. We just did it against Honduras, so that we usually don't, and that's what made yeah. that day so spectacular. But I don't know. I, there is a difference between home games and away games, and you know the fields or the conditions. And guess what? I think five points is good for this window, um, especially after how it started. But I would have taken five anyway, and you yeah. just think it would have been from the Canada game and a draw at Honduras. It turned out the other way. We're, we're still good. We're tied for third place, I think it is, or fourth place. We're up there. Uh, there's a log jam there because first and second is Mexico-Panama, then Canada, then USA. And, yeah, I mean, that's... We're in a good spot going into the next window, which should be a little easier than this window, just mm -hmm. on paper. I think that's fine. Yeah, and Mexico has a tough one because I know uh, Mexico They haven't plays, been great either. Yeah, Mexico plays Canada at home, but then they have to go to Honduras um, where we just won and play a, a good team in Honduras. And that's a match that they might drop. So, like, that that – They've got a tough schedule. I know Canada's got a, a relatively lighter schedule, or no, a tougher schedule this time around too. They've got Mexico, they've got Jamaica, and they've got Panama. So they've got a tough sledding. I think next window's if we're going to try to break into those top three, I think next window might be the window to really take advantage of. All right, I think we can go ahead and start talking about MLS. We good for qualifying? Anything yeah. else to say here? No, Ricardo Pepe. Oh, that's why I love him. The Savior. He is. He really can we is. give him that nickname? Let's the give savior. him that nickname. Let's, let's the savior. Hold on. I, I got to look up like some kind of Savior pun. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, we'll talk about him too. <laughs> then on Friday, Atlanta thrashed uh, Orlando 3 0. Just get a text from Logan that says Orlando sucks. Uh, so that was. Uh, Accurate. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. What to get? They're very hot and cold, though, right? Yeah, I mean, they really are. Yeah. To be second be place, place, they're like yeah. second place, right? Still, no, they're third now. Uh, but to still be in that top three, they are. Oh, they changed the they changed the standings on MLS. Now it clearly shows where the home playoff game and stuff is. That's great. Oh. A great upgrade. I enjoy I that. that. Thank you. Um. But yeah, you had uh, a Daryl DK own goal. Is that really yeah. how that was credited? Yes. Uh, so you had Campbell score in the 25th minute, DK own goal in the 38th, and then Barco in the 72nd. And uh, Orlando slipping to third in the East. Portland beating Vancouver. They lost to Vancouver week one. Let's not forget that because we were all like, what? Vancouver beat Portland? That's crazy. And then uh, things have kind of shaken out more or less uh, how you would expect with Portland above the playoff line of Vancouver below it. But they get it. Uh, Portland gets the win in the 66th minute and own goal from Vesel Linovic. If I said that right. And those were the games on Friday night. Saturday, we had LA Galaxy and Colorado play a 1-1 draw. Uh, which has been a fascinating matchup with how well Colorado's been playing. Um, that puts Colorado still third above LA, but now they have a, well, I guess it's about the same point difference now, right? Five point difference because um, nothing was gained or lost. But they're still within three points of Seattle with a game in hand. Pretty dangerous, the Rapids. Uh, but that was Barrios in the 66th minute and then Grand Sur in the 80th minute for L.A. Seattle beat Minnesota 1-0 at Lumen Field. This was a goal by, uh, as it loads for me here, because I do not have this memorized. Sorry to break the illusion there. Uh, Mior of uh, Seattle, 1-0, 22nd minute. Then New England beat NYCFC, and this was interesting because NYCFC like just curb stomped them what a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, in a game that was, I have that right, right? Didn't they just beat them like pretty bad? Uh, I think it was like four to two or four yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. Um, but Boateng scoring in the twenty-first minute, Buchanan in the sixty-fifth, 
Two nil. And that was the last one. Oh, was it really? I felt like it was more than that. Uh, Rodriguez in the eleventh minute for NYCFC and a red card for Morales in the fifty third. Um, so it was one one when the red card happened. Then Buchanan gets his goal. Tejon Buchanan having himself an incredible couple years here. Last two years have been really good. Uh, Red Bulls and DC draw 1-1 at Red Bull Arena. <clears throat> Excuse me, as it just takes a while to load this. Stuff. Okay, there we go. Yearwood scoring in the fifth minute, and uh, Ola Kamara in the 44th minute. Penalty kick for DC United. Yearwood, by the way, he's the one that came over from uh, Brentford. Yeah. So interesting for him to get on the score sheet. There, uh, Kamara scoring as he's having a better season than last for sure. And DC just keeping it up. Losada playing and being. I mean, look, they're only one point behind Philadelphia. And with the way p- teams talked about Philadelphia at the beginning of the season, you wouldn't know that because people have not really been talking about DC all that much. And they've just been fun to watch. They're getting points, they're at 31 points. They're only one above the playoff spot, though, uh, because some of these teams are really starting to bunch up. But they're, you know, only three points off of the home playoff game. So that East is getting real, <laughs> getting real <laughs> shoddy there, isn't it? It's getting like anybody can drop out at this time. It's kind of scary as a Union fan, as a team that keeps dropping down the table. Very nerve wracking to see that the Union are only two points up of Atlanta, and Atlanta has that Pineda bump now, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, just so insane uh, that DC has not really been getting the credit I think they deserve. Um, FC Cincinnati beat Toronto. So that was a battle for the bottom of the table. Cincinnati now has a five-point clearance above Toronto and a game in hand. So they are doing good. They're fulfilling your prediction, Logan, of not getting the wooden spoon so far. <laughs> but Brenner and Madunian uh, score the goals there. And uh, Miami beat Columbus 1 0, as Columbus has uh, been on free fall lately here. And, you know, Caleb Porter came out and said that they played uh, pretty well <laughs> <laughs> to, a, to a team that. Uh, the best one of the best in the conference yeah i was gonna say he called miami the best team in the conference and like without blinking i was like whose matches has he been watching <laughs> like i'm pretty sure that he's been watching like inter or uh, inter milan and going oh wow Just confusing him yeah. <laughs> yeah he's like wait when did when did uh when did uh ibrahimovic start playing for <laughs> miami <laughs> that's like 12 dps yeah, so. Gonzalo Higuain scoring in the 16th minute. Uh, Columbus Did you see finish... why he scored? Huh? Did you see why Gonzalo scored? No, what do you mean? His daughter told him that he was going to score, so that's why Gonzalo scored. Oh, that's really? Said. Yeah, he goes, Well, if he could just turn it scored. on like that, where has that been? Have his daughter tell him every day. I'm what is saying, that? She's probably the worst cheerleader ever. If she's, <laughs> I mean, this is the first time she's come up to dad and gone, dude, score. Right, <laughs> especially on. with all Miami's problems. I'd be yeah. like... Daughter, tell me to score more. Yeah. Uh, Montreal lose to Nashville. Walker Zimmerman uh, scoring in the 66th minute to give Nashville and propel them to second place uh, where they now sit, and they're three points clear of Orlando and actually only 14 points cl- short of New England, mm. which is still a lot. It's still a lot of points. But like when I was looking at the table before Nashville over, like jumped over you, it was 38 points, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this is a big ask of any team to track them down. But now it only would take, what, five wins and five losses for New England yeah. to turn this around for Nashville. Uh, not going to happen. But, you know, mathematically, not done yet. Uh, Dallas and San Jose draw 1-1. Alana scoring a six-minute penalty for San Jose and Pepe coming back from international duty and saying, I can carry this team as well and getting the draw for Dallas. Then we had uh, Houston beating Austin 3-0 with a goal one minute in by Dorsey, a Fafa Pico goal in the 24th minute, and another one in the 64th minute for Fafa. 
Uh, Josh Wolf came out with some very interesting interview. I'm not sure if you saw this. He came Did out. He call much... Dallas the best team in the Western Conference. No, no, okay. he was not. Uh, he Did was he not call on Miami the... the best team in the Western <laughs> Yes, he did. No, <laughs> wow. uh, no, he he was pretty much ripping into his team. Uh, yeah, so we'll see that. how that if that backfires or if it propels them. The I mean, I don't know what else he else he can try. So. No, he can't. Why not he rip can't it into him? goals for him? Like he, he no. he's just not able to. Um, he, I mean, they had goals, like but... they had like sixty some percent of the possession or more. So maybe seventy some score. percent. I mean, that's their big issue. They knew that coming in, and that's what I just don't get about Austin. Don't freak out. You knew you weren't going to be able to score. Like I, there, there's no number nine that that is designated to you that that screams I'm going to score goals. And I thought it was interesting as they relied heavily upon Diego Fagundes to score a ton of goals, which we know that doesn't usually go hard. Have they tried getting Cecilio's daughter to tell That's, him to score goals? This is all coming full circle. <laughs> we are on a roll today. You guys are welcome. Just, just uh, try everything. You know, yeah. it's working. It's working over there. Uh, try yeah. it over here, right? Yeah. Did you know that Ricardo Pepe's nickname is L Train? For, yeah, like the train. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. He's so he's so nice. I like him. Yeah, but I will call oh, him okay. the savior. Uh, <laughs> it's just Maury scoring for SKC four minutes in. Johnny Russell six minutes in as S- SKC beat Chicago. Uh, not really a big shock here at all. Chicago been struggling uh, this season. They're you know. And 12th. They're not going to get wooden spoon, it looks like, but they're not going to go very far. They're in the kind of the Red Bull camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, while that loss to Houston, Austin falls to rock bottom of the West, but they're still four points up of wooden spoon, so they still might be safe of the wooden spoon, which I think if you're a new club, you got to relish in that because you, you got to get that thing. Like, you, yeah, you need some sort of wooden silver, relic. Work, yeah. right? <laughs> What like, did we won in our first year? Nobody told us we were supposed to score the most. We thought we were scoring the least. <laughs> then on uh, Sunday, it wrapped it up. MLS after dark, LAFC three, Salt Lake two. This was a Rango scoring in the first minute, then in the thirtieth minute after Crylock equalized in the twenty eighth minute. Then we had uh, Julio scoring in the forty eighth minute to make it two two. And then Dakovic scoring in the 59th on own goal for LAFC to make it 3-2. Well, it was a wild game. RSL comes out on top with more possession, just less than uh, two shots, two shots less than LAFC, but five shots less on target for LAFC. And that ultimately is the problem. They couldn't just get goals on tar- get shots on target that ends up converting into goals. Um, but LAFC home game. They should have won this game. They did win this game. Where does that put them on the standings? It puts them eighth place tied with RSL, so they don't lose any ground with RSL. They actually gain ground with RSL. They both have the same amount of games played. And the only thing that's keeping RSL above them, goals. 36 goals scored. Or is it the goal differential? It is the goal differential. Yeah, they're the scored. exact same team. If you look at their yeah, like, their goals scored and their goals against are just one numbers <laughs> off each, and they have goal differential of four to two. That that puts them there. So maybe they could have could they have left from them if they didn't give up any goals? Yeah, they yeah. should have. Yeah. So hey, next time don't concede two goals. I guess is the <laughs> is the thing for LAFC. You could have been in the playoff spot for a little that's, bit. That's uh, Jordan's TED talk with LAFC. <laughs> yeah. Just don't give up goals. How hard is that? Uh, So where does that put us? That puts us on the East. New England with uh, first place, 55 points. They are uh, leading the one seed spot by 14 points. Nashville in second with 41 points. Uh, Orlando in third with 38 points. NYCFC in fourth with 34 points. Philly in fifth with 32 points. D.C. in 6th with 31 points. Montreal in 7th with 31 points. Atlanta in 8th with 30 below the playoff line there. Miami climbing up to ninth, They're in 29 points. Columbus in 10th with 27 points. And then I think you can draw the line there, and we have New York, Chicago, Cincy, Toronto uh, not probably making any of those playoff spots. I think 
you could probably draw the line at Columbus as well, but mathematically, I'm going to draw the line at Columbus, I think. Um, 10 and up, I think, is probably the best chance of getting into a playoff spot. Red Bull uh, have like 36 games in hand, though. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah, did they only have 21 games played? Did they like? Oh yeah. Well, they, they did have the one that was canceled. Times. Yeah, and there's a cat behind me, so like she's mad about the Red Bulls being that low. <laughs> and now she's. Good. But yeah, they had a couple canceled actually. They had the Miami game down here, I think, canceled, and they had one up there when it rained. Yeah, with the hurricane. Mm-hmm. West Coast, Seattle, with 45 points. Then SKC in second with 43, Colorado in third with 42, LA Galaxy in fourth with 37. Then you have Portland in thirty uh, in fifth place with 33 points. I almost said 33rd place. That'd not be good. Uh, Minnesota, be good. <laughs> Minnesota, there's only 30 teams, right? <laughs> uh, not even. There's only 27 right now. They get no spoons. <laughs> get yeah. Forks. <laughs> Uh, Minnesota in 6th with 31 points. RSL in 7th with 30 points. LA in 8th with 30 points. Vancouver in 9th with 29 points. San Jose in 10th with 27 points. And 11th with Dallas with 26 points. I think Dallas has a shot. They're only 4 points back. But Houston and Austin, probably not. 22 points Houston and 19 points Austin. Where do we go from here? Uh, we don't have much more time left in the season. The team with the most games is the Revs with 25. Yeah. And there's, what, uh, 34 games? Mm-hmm. So we're looking they at nine, nine, games nine games left for That's some of these teams wild. and about 10 left for some of the others. With, um, with the Red Or Bulls even more, 12 points. maybe, right? So some teams have 12. Yeah, the Red Bulls have to play the rest of their season. I think they're like only halfway through it, so... Yeah, so I don't know. I there. This is MLS, right? We got no clue on how this is going to happen. Do you think Atlanta has enough with the Pineda turnaround now that they can successfully get into the playoffs? And I think if so, that's a successful season for them, right? After how bad it was. Yeah, I, I think so. Like, I, I think... And this is unfortunate just for DC and Montreal, and this will probably come back to bite me again like the season previews. But I think that if you're looking at two teams uh, that could drop out, it's those two. I don't know if Philly would. I don't know. Who knows at this point? Philly's not been playing very well. Um, but if I had to pick like Philly and DC and a tough stretch here, um, Montreal's kind of like that roller coaster ride where they're up and down and up and down. Um, so I would think that Atlanta, the way that they're playing, they've won four of their last five, right? They've collected four, their 12 points in their last, uh, out of the last 15 available. Um, that's a really good, really, really good uh, stretch of games. So I think that if anybody, I think it, it might be Atlanta. And I see now maybe why they called it uh, Miami the best team because they've won quite a bit lately. But um, I think that Atlanta, out of all those teams down there, I think they, which is crazy to say because of how badly we talked about them a couple weeks ago. Um I think that they're the most realistic shot. And when you have Joseph Martinez uh, playing up at the front, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know who's going to stop him if he does get hot. So it, it's a matter of time before I think Atlanta moves its way up into the Eastern Conference playoffs. I think I saw a stat somewhere, and I don't know how else to look this up, so I can't double check this right now because it just came to me. But I think Doyle pointed it out before on Twitter that if a team wins the supporter shield and then makes like a semifinal run in the Champions League, they usually miss the playoffs that year. So uh, that's what the Union are doing right now. So if they do end up missing it, it's kind of falling right in line with how things have been going for some of these teams. Uh, and they do have a game tomorrow uh, – not tomorrow, sorry. Uh, tomorrow from when we release this. Uh, they will have a game – um, in the Champions League on Wednesday, leg two, and we'll see how they how they do in that uh, situation. So I guess let's uh, preview. But I do think you're right that Montreal and DC, I think, are teams that could fall out. And I know Paul is probably listening to this, and he's you know not again, guys. You doubted us before, uh, <laughs> but. If you if you didn't know, that's a reference to when we had a preview with Paul for the Montreal, and uh, we both said they were not going to do well, <laughs> and he said that they could do well and maybe even make playoffs. And look, there you go, they're in the spot. But 
uh, Tuesday, September 14th, we have Columbus versus New York Red Bulls at 7.30 on ESPN+. Plus. We have NYCFC versus Dallas at the same time on ESPN+. Plus. Toronto and Miami at the same time on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, so Toronto, the worst team in the East, going up against the best team in the East um, there. And then we have... Seattle versus Santos Laguna on ESPN2 for the League's Cup. That should be fun. Uh, that's a rivalry that's been around uh, during some Champions League games. It's It's been good. Then on Wednesday, we have Atlanta versus Cincinnati. Ooh, this sets up perfectly for Atlanta here. They can get maybe an easy three points against Cincinnati. DC plays Chicago at 7.30. Orlando versus Montreal at the same time. Kansas City versus Minnesota at 8.30. Austin versus LAFC at 9, which will be their third meeting of the year. At 9 o'clock, Philadelphia Union versus Club America for leg two. That's at Subaru Park on FS1. Club America leads that 2-0 on aggregate. I don't think it's going to be even close, honestly. Uh, with the way this team is playing, Club America probably puts another one away and that that seals it that'd be an away goal it'd be three nil and i can't see the union scoring one goal let alone three um portland versus colorado at 10 o'clock la versus houston at 10 30 san jose versus rsl at 10 30 and club leon versus pumas on 11 o'clock on espn plus for the league's cup then Thursday, we have CONCACAF Champions League, Cruz Azul versus Monterrey on FS2. Monterrey leads that 1-0. And then we have games on the weekend, which, geez, I guess i got to read all these too. Uh, Miami versus New York at 7 on FS1. Then on Saturday, Atlanta, D.C. at 3.30 on Twitter, TDN and Univision. 7 o'clock, Revs versus Columbus. Cincinnati versus NYCFC at 7.30. Toronto versus Nashville at 7.30. Ooh, easy one for Nashville. They should probably get some points there. Austin versus San Jose at 8 o'clock. Minnesota versus LA Galaxy at 8. 9.30, RSL versus Seattle. And Houston versus Dallas at 10 o'clock. Then on Sunday, we have Montreal versus Chicago at 1.00. Philadelphia versus Orlando at 4 o'clock on ESPN. They take Derby. Yep, it's the uh, stateside soccer show Derby there. Second match of that. Uh, Portland versus LAFC at 7.30 on FS1. And Colorado versus Vancouver at 9 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. If I did not say they were on national TV, all those games are on ESPN+. Plus. So. Kind of crazy. We have a national our, – our stateside Derby is a national – game i wonder if that's why yeah i think that they've heard um we should live stream it <laughs> oh we should i don't know if i'll be home i might be that? home it's sunday four o'clock but uh, yeah lots of stuff going on it's so insane to have the union on national tv we never are so that's uh that's a nice little pick up there <laughs> um but yeah, so that sets everything up there. A little shorter show this week, I guess. But uh, Logan, anything jumping out of you to talk about before we head out? I think Nashville looks really good. Uh, and we talked uh, with Jamie Watson, and we talked about the fact that this team looks special. Hani Mukhtar has 10 goals, 8 assists. So that's a team that I think is one of the only teams in the East right now that's playing well enough to dethrone uh, New England when it comes to playoff talk. Um, I know we've got about nine to 10 matches roughly. So, you know, there's still some time, but I, I think right now, if you're talking about form and you're talking about a team to be reckoned with, I know Nashville uh, is a team that I would be looking at uh, as far as the East is concerned. Um, you know, I think NYCFC, Orlando, Philly have kind of struggled here. Uh, it's been a very hot and cold season. Um, there, there's times where they've looked good. Philly started the year really well. Orlando started really well. New York started really well. And then they kind of went into this like weird funk. Um, they've, drop points when they shouldn't have, um, you know, MLS it. And then, you know, I think it, but it, seriously, if I'm looking at a team to beat, I think it, it's new England and then it goes maybe Nashville and, and, and Colorado. So I think that those are two teams, at least in the East and the West that, that look like teams that are up in, uh, in the, in the eyes of the, 
contenders for MLS Cup, and I think that that uh, that you know, I think over the next couple of weeks we're going to really find out how good these teams are. All right. Well, what I want to say is we are kicking off. If you like baseball, a baseball podcast. If you're watching the video, you might have seen the logo behind me here. I have a sweatshirt with it on. Uh, the Extra Innings Baseball Show. Uh, you can follow us now. We've done a few episodes, but we're really waiting to kick in the gear for the playoffs that start on October 5th. Um, the way we came about this, you know, Logan and I were like, hey, do you want to do, you know, triple the podcast come March and really not have any spare time to do anything <laughs> else? And we said, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, and uh, if you want to follow us, go check that out because – it's going to be fun. We've done three episodes, just like a get to know us and like collect stuff we collect. And I forget what the second, Oh, the whole, my hall of fame trip that I took. Yeah. Just so if you're a soccer, yeah. If you're a soccer and baseball fan, check that out. Um, but other than that, I think that is about it. All that I really wanted to say there. Uh, if you want to follow this show, all that is in the description of the podcast, but it is also at Stateside Show for pretty much anything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook is Stateside Show is the handle for that. Email is statesideshow at gmail.com. And we will catch you all next week to break down the midweek and weekend action. And I will probably cry over the union getting knocked out of the Champions League. And, and that will all be on air. Be yeah, and get knocked out of the playoffs. Why not? Yeah, just rip the band aid off. Uh, <laughs> But thanks for listening and have a great rest of your week.